Trichology and Trichologists. What do they do and how do you find a good one? Hi, my name is William Gonitz. I am the CEO of Advanced Trichology. I am a fellow with the World Trichology Society and I've been a practicing trichologist for over 21 years. So I know a little bit about trichology considering I've been doing it for the vast majority of my adult life. But what really most people don't know is how does a trichologist fit into the landscape of trying to get their hair loss under control? And what's the difference between a dermatologist and a trichologist? And ultimately, should you go and see one? Because quite frankly, just like doctors, trichologists are not all created equal. You're going to find a good one, you're going to find a bad one, and at the end of the day, you need to know kind of what to look for. So that's what we're going to talk about, and there's four things that I'm going to cover, and let's get started. One, what is a trichologist? Well, a trichologist is a scientist of the hair and scalp. The problem is with trichology is that in the United States, trichology is a certificate. Now, you could get a certificate for going to a course for two days and claim that you're a trichologist, or like myself, you could have participated in multiple organizations for over 21 years, run multiple clinics, and have a huge track record of performance, and obviously have tens of thousands of patients under your belt. But how do you know which one's which? So that's one of those things that you have to look at when you're dealing with all of this. So first and foremost, again, a trichologist is an individual who is specializing exclusively in the hair and scalp, and they are typically going to be dealing with hair loss and scalp conditions. That is their only job, and that is what they do. Number two, what are they going to do when you arrive? So if you go to see a trichologist, what are you going to see or experience when you go there? Because if you go to see a dermatologist, typically what you're going to experience is you're going to book an appointment, assuming you can even get in in the next 90 days. You're going to walk in, they're going to look at you for five minutes, and they're going to go, here's a prescription for finasteride, oral minoxidil, topical minoxidil, and maybe spironolactone if you're a female. Now that's because that's what they're trained in, and that is exclusively what they know what to do about hair loss, and that's okay. And I have many of my dermatologist friends, they have a little bit more experience in that realm, but that's something that you're going to expect when you walk into a dermatologist. Now when you walk into a trichologist, if you're going to go to a good one, they're actually going to sit you down, they're going to do a patient history, they're going to ask you what other products that you've been on, they're going to look at your scalp under the microscope, and then they're going to make recommendations so that in typically six to eight weeks, you're going to come back and they're going to repeat this evaluation. They're going to do another microscopic analysis of your scalp to better understand how things are growing. And they're going to recommend that you document your progress, you're going to take before pictures, and you're going to see through a series of events exactly how you're developing so that you can grow more hair. Many trichologists, including myself, actually work with dermatologists. We work with physicians to say, hey, if we need blood tests, let's go ahead and get these blood tests. If we need a prescription for clobetazole, spironolactone, topical finasteride, this is what you're going to do and this is who you go to to see. So they have a network of individuals that they work with and that is basically what you should expect from a good one. Now number three, how do you select a good trichologist? Now I get this question quite a bit. If they found me, they think I'm a good trichologist, which is good because I am and I've been around the block many, many, many times. So I've seen through 21 years of experience, everything for the most part. There's a handful of things I probably haven't seen, but you're going to manage all sorts of things as a trichologist. You're going to see scarring alopecias like frontal fibrosing alopecia. You're going to see scarring folliculitis. You're going to see things that disguise themselves as male or female pattern hair loss, like diffuse alopecia areata. You're going to see a host of different things, scalp conditions that cause itching and burning that actually have no physical representation of hair loss or anything under the microscope. It's bizarre. And they're going to have to know how to improve your hair growth and get you hair regrowth results with the tools that they have available to them. So this is what you should be looking at when you're trying to select one because unfortunately, if they just say they're a trichologist, it doesn't mean a whole lot. So you want to know how long they've been in practice. You want to see their before and after pictures. Have they been practicing showing off these before and after pictures for a long period of time? What is their Better Business Bureau rating? Unfortunately, that is something you need to look at because it's just one of those things. But most importantly, you know, are they a member of a society that actually has legitimacy because there's a bunch of societies out there, there's a bunch of certifications out there that absolutely have no business saying that they're in trichology or trichologist. So the societies that you should be looking for, one obviously which I'm a member of and on the board of, the World Trichology Society. So look for members of the World Trichology Society. They'll typically have a WTS, in my case I'm a fellow, so I have an FWTS after my name. Look for the International Association of Trichology, so that's an international organization 
organization. So it'd be IAT after their name. And then you're looking at some of the European organizations. There's a lot of them. Most of those are very good actually because they have a longer term course of study. They almost have a residency where people are gonna be going through and better understanding how they're gonna treat these particular cases. The initials after their name are gonna be IOT, MIT, and there's more that are coming out. So those are things to look for. And again, you really need somebody who's got a track record. It's okay to ask how long they've been practicing. It's okay to ask for their results. And I actually had recently somebody say that they asked for those results from one of their trichologists that they were gonna go see and they couldn't produce any results even though they talked a really good game. So with all of that in mind, you can use this information to select one. Now, what type of results should you expect when you go to a trichologist? Well, if you come to me, I'm gonna shoot you straight and give you correct answers. I'm gonna give you everything that I know and that I've seen work over the last 21 years. So you should expect getting real answers. You should also expect that if a trichologist does not believe that you're gonna be successful, that they're gonna be honest with you. Because quite frankly, the amount of times that people have come into my office and I said to them, I don't believe that you're gonna be able to regrow hair because I don't see any hair under the microscope here or basically the treatment isn't gonna be powerful enough in this genre so I really feel like you might need to get a hair transplant. There are so many of these different scenarios that only experience is gonna allow you to provide to your patient, but they need to be honest. And you should be expecting results under the microscope. And most importantly, you should be expecting results usually six months, nine months, 12 months down the road visibly. You should have a before and after photo that clearly shows results and you know that you're improving and you know that that person has delivered those results for you because they were helpful, they guided you, they knew what to expect. So that is my dissertation on trichology. I know I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but that is the real deal. So please, if you've got questions, put them in the comments. I'm happy to help in any way. Also, if you want an appointment with me, you can email my staff and we can arrange something. But at the end of the day, you need to be following these typical guidelines to ensure that you're going to get results. Because the amount of times that I've seen people on Reddit, on some of these other forums that they're like, I'm giving up and shaving my head. You don't have to. There is always a solution unless there's a scar in alopecia for hair loss. And typically the rule is you can go back in time, usually three to five years regardless. So if you had hair three to five years ago, you should be able to get more hair with a treatment period of usually anywhere from around 18 months to 24 months. I hope that helps. If you like this content, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and like this video. And please, I'm happy to help in any way.